Hi, everyone. This is uh, Art Talks Session 15. We're joined today by Jared Krzyzewski. Uh, Jared, if you want to say hey to everyone. Hey, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot for joining us, man. I know you're super busy. Appreciate you taking the time out. Oh, thanks for thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Anytime. Yeah, so uh, to, to get started, we always uh, start with kind of getting some background. Um, sure. If you could uh, kind of tell us about uh, your, your like how, how you first got into art. Yeah, uh, well, the first thing I, I kind of remember vividly drawing was uh, Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. Oh, right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, you grow up on cartoons and movies, and I was, uh, I grew up in the, the mountains of Colorado. Um, oh, so, me too. We share that in common, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so for me, like, a drive to the corner store was 45 minutes downhill. So... <laughs> You know, I spent a lot of time just watching movies and cartoons and, you know, wandering around my backyard, uh, which, you know, led to this kind of gorgeous trail. And, you know, uh, so it was very spacious and, uh, you know, I had a lot of freedom, but uh, not a lot of people around. Mm -hmm. um, so so the first thing I remember drawing was Sebastian. And uh, my my parents were so pleased with it that they made copies and, you know, posted it all up my dad's office. Uh, my father was a doctor, so he, you know, posted that up everywhere so his patients could see. And uh, that's when I learned that drawing gets you attention. Mm. So, uh, so I, you know, I've been drawing for, you know, 20 plus years. And um, I really, I didn't actually take it seriously until the latter part of my life. Um, I, I'd grown up um, actually as an actor. And I was uh, doing a lot of theater and commercials and, uh, you know, all, all kinds of things. And so the art was a part of my life, but never like the dominating force of my more, life. More of like a hobby, I guess? Yeah, it was actually a hobby. And um, so, so all through college, because I went to college for theater, um, you know, I kept drawing and, and keeping up with stuff, but it, again, it was, it wasn't something that, uh, that I took very seriously. Um, so all through college, my drawing, you know, never really advanced kind of beyond my high school level. Um, cause in high school I did, uh, you know, I worked for the school newspaper and, uh, you know, I, I did cartoons and things like that and took art classes on the side. But, it, but again, it was, it was still never as dominating as, as kind of the, the acting part of my life. And so uh, I didn't think that, uh, you know, you, that art was valuable enough to me. And uh, so, so after college, um, I kind of just wandered about for a while, just kind of figuring out what I was going to do with my life. And, yeah, and it, it's a uh, so I you know here I was uh, out of college, didn't really have a path yet, didn't really figure things out. So I tried different things and and uh, you know worked different jobs and and I still did theater, but you know theater kind of like dwindled as as uh, you know working became you know time consuming, and so uh, I eventually. Uh, I worked uh, at a Borders, and uh, I, I worked there for a little over a year, and and this kind of dates me a little bit, but that's when we had Borders uh, still around, and I guess for some of your younger views, it was a bookstore that you could go in and buy books and things. Um, <laughs> uh, so so I was working at a at this Borders in Century City um, in uh, in uh, Culver City, and. Uh, it was it was a uh, you know grueling kind of experience, but uh, you know it gave me a chance to read a lot of books and uh, you know you know work a you know I guess a, a normal life and uh, you know I, I kept going back to these books, these digital art masters books, and um, I kept looking at them and going like, wow, this is what artists are doing you know today, and I thought, man, this you know. I was, I was kind of at that right time where I, I, I knew that uh, I needed to kind of do something with my life, um, but I didn't know what that was yet. So uh, those, those art master books kind of, you know, drew me in. And uh, I asked, you know, I asked my cousin who worked in video games if he knew any, you know, where you go to learn this stuff. 
And uh, so he pointed me to a couple of different schools. And uh, so I looked at Noman very seriously. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that kind of clenched it for me is, is I was really impressed with their website and uh, you know, the, the kind of list of board members uh, that, were, that were on there. And I thought, okay, you know, I'll go back to school. So I was about 20, uh, 28 when, uh, when I decided to go back to school. So it was, uh, it was a later in life kind of choice. And, um, so I, you know, I put together my portfolio of all my drawings that I had done and I hoped that it was enough. I, I spent a lot of time doing new drawings. So I was living with, uh, you know, a couple of buddies of mine and they wanted to go out and party. And I said like, Hey guys, I got to work on this thing. You know, I'm, I'm trying. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm trying to do something here, and uh, so I turned down a lot of like social opportunities and parties and things like that just to focus on my portfolio, uh, very intensely, uh, to get that ready. Was uh, was uh, your time at Borders when you when you found those master books? Was that like your first introduction to fundamentals, or had you had any technical experience uh, before? No technical experience whatsoever in any 3D. Must have been eye-opening, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I didn't even know that that stuff was like being done um, because, you know, I had a buddy in college that was messing around with Photoshop, and I went, wow, that's really cool. You know, uh, uh, but I never messed around with Photoshop in college, and uh, it wasn't until after after college that I decided to like open it up and start learning. <laughs> so I taught myself Photoshop, which was the first thing that I did. Um, but other than that, like no, no 3d experience whatsoever. Mm. And, uh, and it was really hard learning <laughs> <laughs> from, from like zero to like here, you're inundated with this for, you know, your life. Here's this whole new world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's this whole new world, and now I have to uh, kind of uh, live in it. And, uh, you know, the first day of school, uh, you know, uh, first day of my intro to Maya, actually, uh, they brought a tour through. And uh, after the, t you know, the tour kind of comes through with a crowd of people behind it. And um, our teacher says, hey, you know who that was? And we're like, well, we're all just shrugging, going, Ugh. he's like, that was J.J. Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> so that was day one of, of, this, of school. And uh, I, I, I took it as a good sign, at least I hope. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> you got somebody. Yeah. Ready to I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm in the right spot. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was my first introduction to 3D. And, uh, you know, honestly, it was really difficult to learn you know, a lot of my classmates had experience and, you know, had been in 3D for years. And uh, so it was really intimidating from uh, from a beginner standpoint. Yeah, I imagine like they, they probably have like, you know, were able to navigate like the, the toolbars and everything. Absolutely. And, and uh, man, they, scratch. <laughs> they just whizzed around in those programs. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing? So, <laughs> even, even as I was going through school to learn this stuff, I was like, I'm not sure that I'm doing the right thing. You know, I, I don't know, you know, like this is way beyond me. So it was really uh, a, a challenging experience, you know, on top of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even, even though something uh, is difficult, you got to just push through that anyway and, and you know, try it if it's what you want. And, and I'm, I'm a huge film geek, uh, you know, uh, film and gore and horror and all that stuff. So uh, getting to, you know, I, I wanted to get there, but I didn't realize how, how difficult it was going to be. Definitely an uphill battle. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. And, and uh, worth it the whole, the whole way through. And I'm very lucky because I had a lot of great teachers and a lot of good friends show me the ropes and, and kind of uh, welcome me into the fold. So uh, yeah, I imagine was, like, so many big names there too, like probably great networking opportunity to kind of get your foot in the door. Yeah, totally. And, and that's how it happened actually was, was through Noman. And uh, I was uh, in my uh, production design class and our teacher, uh, Jared Morantz, who's, who is a mentor and, and just brilliant artist. Um, he said like, Hey, we're looking for interns at, at Aaron Sims. And does anyone want to, you know, try for an internship? 
and my hand went right up. Uh, yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I gave him my contact info, and I was there a week later uh, starting starting an internship. So I guess and that was so, like your first like legit gig, I, I suppose, in the, in the actual business. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, I was going to school at the time as well. So I was doing this internship and going to school uh, full time, and it was uh, exhausting. Um, but it was awesome. It was, it was the great, you know, uh, really great experience. And, um, so I'm still there to this day, you know, I'll, I'll be in a different fashion. So it's really, really cool. I'm sure when you landed that internship, you were like, that was like enough motivation. Like, okay, I'm going to school and I've got this internship, you know, this yeah. Awesome thing. Yeah. Yeah, it started feeling like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe I'm, I'm doing the right thing here. And, uh, you know, I, I was just floored by the work that, that the artists there were doing. And, um, you know, when you're surrounded by it and uh, all day you, you start picking up tricks and, and you start learning from them. And so they were, you know, a, a really group of great guys and they uh, they really helped me uh, grow as an artist. So uh, it, was, it was just a really awesome time filled with like a lot of learning and, uh, you know, just motivation and, you uh, you know, so, so bit by bit, I kind of uh, worked my way kind of up and, uh, you know, started contributing, you know, to, to designs, to, to projects that were going out. Mm. And, uh, it, you know, there, there was no kind of feeling like that. You know, it's, it's, uh, it was really, really incredible and fortunate. Yeah, definitely. Is, is, so your specific area, uh, and I guess, because you, you've climbed the ladder quite a bit in the Aaron Sims company, like your specific area is, uh, I guess, your specialty is the character design? or creature? Yeah, so I'm a, a 3D character and creature guy. Um, so I love, I fell in love with ZBrush at, uh, at Noman, and uh, it's been uh, just an amazing, uh, yeah, amazing journey to work on since then. And... Uh, so I, I, I definitely feel like I've, you know, I continue to grow. I'm still learning. Like I don't, I don't stop learning. So that's, that's what's kind of amazing is, is you see all these other amazing artists out there and you're like, oh man, I want to do that. You know, I want to do what they're doing and, and know what they know. So it, it, yeah, it's been really, really cool. Oh, but, I mean, is, uh, yeah, you talk a little bit about like, I mean, well, we talked a lot about the amount of work that it requires to actually, like, you know, kind of climb the ladder and keep improving and start, like, yeah. you know, but, uh, and you talked about how you started having some issues with your wrists. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little bit about that. Um, yeah, t totally. So, um, one, one thing that, uh, that Jared Morantz, uh, said to me once, and it really stuck in my head is he said, you know, concept art is not a job. It's a lifestyle. And uh, that really stuck with me. And I didn't know what he meant at the time. I was like, no, it's not. You can have a life and do this too. Uh, and it turns out he was very, very right. And I was very, very wrong. It is a lifestyle. And it's a mode of thinking where you have to dedicate yourself to your art all the time, 100%, um, in order to get where you want to go. And uh, I didn't realize that at the time. And to an extent, I, I really do push myself pretty hard. Um, and I know a lot of people do in this industry. Um, you know, they're they're really pushing. They push themselves to exhaustion uh, almost. And um, I did the same. Uh, I thought that I could teach uh, three classes while working fifty hours a week, and then weekends working on freelance. You know, so I, I thought I could fill my schedule as much as possible, and uh, it was a mistake because not not because the my energy level was was unwilling, but I didn't realize the physical toll that it would take on my body, on uh, my arms and wrists. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so at the end of last year, uh, I I was in a really terrible place with my wrists, uh, which affected my mood and my well being. I thought uh, my career was over, um, and I was looking at serious options about what to do. Uh, uh, so I thought, okay, uh, if my wrists go, 
right? Maybe I can drive Uber or, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll, yeah, exactly. You know, like I'll, I'll just pick up somehow and, and, you know, I'll just, you know, go back to living a normal life. And that really depressed me because I know that's not possible after, after doing what you love to do anything else is to, you know, be just to, to have a part of you that's taken away. Yeah, it'd be soul crushing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. And, and I, I took, you know, weeks off of work um, and did nothing just so I could recover. Uh, I, I saw a doctor, uh, I saw an acupuncturist. Um, you know, I was like, okay, I got to try anything that I can. I would dip my arms into buckets of ice water um, just to cool them off because they felt like they were like on fire. Mm. Um, so imagine at your wrist, right, where the bending point of your wrist is, uh, imagine like a heat map and I could feel that heat radiating at the wrist all the way down to the forearm and uh, up the arm and, and so on. And um, so, so to do 30 minutes of work was agony. Uh, I had trouble even turning my wrists. So, so you can, your, your wrists are in two positions, which is uh, pronation and supination, right? So supination, your, your palms are facing up like you're holding a bowl of soup. And in pronation, your palms are face down. Um, I couldn't even turn my wrists um, to do that. And uh, so it's uh, it was very painful, both kind of personally and professionally. I was very, very concerned about, you know, my future and uh, my well-being. And, yeah, it, it was a really trying time. Uh, so fast forward, um, you know, I, I started seeing my, my trainer um, and – you know, I've known my I've known my trainer for ten years. Um, we've always worked together. Uh, I, I recognized early on that being hunched over a drawing desk was taking a toll, um, and, and you know it was affecting my posture, which caused um, you know a, a subscapular impingement underneath my uh, left scapula. So your your scapula is your shoulder blade, and um, underneath it, there's you know all this connective tissue. So I had like a knot that was forming underneath my scapula and uh, it really, I could feel it all the way through my arm and it was just really painful. So I, I, I immediately sought out uh, a trainer to help me. And um, so I met my trainer, uh, uh, his name is Michael Galvez and we've been working together for, for 10 years now. And um, he's been an extraordinary friend and, and a good kind of part of my, my health regimen. And uh, he kind of, woke me up to the, to the fact that my, my chosen profession is also doing damage to my body. And, and so we're trying to find that work-life balance um, and working on healing methods, you know, so I can continue to do what I love. So fast forward to January here, and um, I thought my career was over. Uh, I thought my, my work was done. My life was over, essentially. And... Uh, we, we started, we, we sat down and we talked it out and we're like, okay, here's what's going on. We need to address this, you know, consistently. And so we started doing that. And uh, the way we addressed it is, is what happens is you build up myofascial tissue in your arms and you build this up over an extensive period of time. And, and when you're working on a keyboard and, and tablet, um, your 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 hands are making all these kind of shortcut gestures, right? Uh, to 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 do little things, and you don't think about the the effect that has on your body and arms and and uh, shoulder, because uh, it all affects everything going up the chain. Mm -hmm. um, so what was happening is I was building myofascial tissue um, at a deep level in my arms, and uh, it it built up so much that it became Im almost impossible to turn my arms, to turn my wrists. So it hurts <laughs> real bad. It hurts real, real bad. And uh, so what we started doing is we started taking a roller and you can buy these things on online. They're, they're like foam rollers with little knobs in them. And um, he started like going to town, rolling on my, my arms and wrists. And it is, it, it was by far the worst pain I've ever been in. Uh, it, it really, really hurts to do a session. 
Um, but by the end, all that myofascial breakup allows me to turn my wrists again. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it allows me to, to work a whole day without feeling any pain whatsoever. So, so there is a method to, to, to fix your arms, you know, if you're going through this stuff and, you know, I'll just put it out there. If you're ever feeling like arm, uh, you know, discomfort, uh, seek out a professional trainer, um, or, a you know, a massage therapist, uh, someone who can massage and break up that deep tissue. Cause, cause it just builds over time and you don't realize it because we're sitting at a desk all day long. That yeah. stuff just like builds up and it, it can be really counterproductive uh, to your health. I know yeah, that I think was important to emphasize is like finding a good balance to counter it. Cause, cause you are just completely immobile, you know, right. your computer. And for long periods, if you don't do any time, yeah, you're, and you're you can put an end day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. And then like later in life, it can, it can like end your career there. <laughs> yeah. Man. Like I'm, I'm 35 now. Right. And, and, um, I've, I've been doing CG for, you know, seven and a half years and it really didn't start affecting me until like last year. You know what I mean? Where, where, uh, you know, I was pushing myself at, at a level that, uh, I thought I could continue to do that. And, uh, it turns out you can't, <laughs> there's a price to pay. Um, so, so since I started opening up about it, I've had a lot of artists contact me and, and tell me like similar issues that they're going through and it, we're, it's all the same thing. We sit at a desk hunched over, um, and that can be really counterproductive to your, to your health. I, I agree. Like, I think that, like that's a huge, huge point to, to emphasize to people that are you know, pursuing an art career, you know, get up, go, go out, go work. Yeah. You know, be, be as, like I always try to do the exercise every day just because you know, we spend so much time sitting. That right. You don't find that balance. You, know, you, know, uh, you have to find that balance in your life. You know, and and uh, destroying your body for your art is is counterproductive because then you don't get to do your art, right? And that's what that's what the true motivator is 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 creation. And uh, if you feel like you're you know your body's going to suffer don't do it don't do it man um so so get out stretch like every hour get up stand up roll your shoulders back um stretch break up that myofascial tissue uh build up and then go exercise like do cardio um because we build up what's called lactic acid, lactic acid. Oh, oh, i'm getting an echo, an echo. Oh, sorry yeah we get some yeah we get some feedback so a lot of my so first lot of my projects first were, projects were um, um, cut more more commercial, more commercial work, work or, um, or uh, kind of a pilot, pilot software, software, software for TV. For TV. So one of the first so projects I worked on was uh, ABC's uh, Once Upon a Time, and it was it was designing Jiminy Cricket <laughs> uh, for the pilot. So, uh, so I did the so I did the design in 2D, and then I did a 3D model, which is still in the pilot. And so it was really yeah, so that was really, like my first experience, like experience with like uh, uh, TV uh, because it's TV because it's turnaround. Turnaround. So getting to see so it getting like, see within, like a months, within a matter of months was really months, really cool. Really really cool. And, it must have uh, been neat to kind of uh, have to reimagine like those kind of iconic characters too. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, 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 it's a challenge, but it's, it's, it's more it's fun to do it. So you just kind of tackle it head on. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I love taking I love on love taking really, on really uh, uh, iconic stuff because, because you know it's you it's, know, it's, it's, it's a part of your childhood. childhood you just love it. Just love it. So you hope yeah, that, uh, I remember you said that you had star like your first drawing was Sebastian. So it must have been kind of like kind of like a full circle moment to actually yeah, do a legitimate yeah. piece of art for for like an IP like that. Yeah, that's a yeah, really good point. That's a really good point. Um. um but yeah, uh, yeah uh, ABC's Once Upon a Time turned out really good, really good. and, uh, and uh, it was uh, it was yeah, a yeah, feeling uh, like I've like experienced like before. before. It's, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a high. High. Uh, getting to see uh, getting it, like, to see it and breathe on screen. So it so it, it was it, the, start the start of my addiction for making for creatures, and creatures and characters. Characters. Yeah, because I imagine like everything you've done up to them was probably just like stagnant. So to actually see something that's moving and breathing and actually yeah, interacting yeah. must have been, you know, pretty big trip. 
I, I remember when I, they sent me the test me for it, test and, for and, and I just I blew, I my, just, lid. I blew it my lid. Amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, from from there, like, uh, what like what was like the next thing that you uh, sort of transitioned into? Well, the well, while, hey, it was while it was interning, uh, we actually worked uh, on we actually worked Ninja, on Ninja, 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 Ninja Turtles. Turtles. And I was and in the was in work was terrible. Was terrible. I watched all of these senior, senior level, level artists, level artists really, really amazing designs, amazing for, designs it. for it. And so I begged and them. So I, I said, please, them, let, I said, please, please let, let me do a turtle. And it was, uh, and it was uh, the worst design I've ever done. And Michael Bay hated it. And it became the example of what not to do. And so the show kind of went away. And, uh, and it came uh, back later came on, back like, a later on later. like a year or two later. And I got to, and I got to, 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 uh, to uh, do designs for the designs for turtles. turtles. And, uh, and so, uh, so within the matter so of like a, year and, of half, like a year and a half, my work had grown. My work had grown to point to where I was getting where designs, I was getting through. designs through. And so, uh, and so uh, working on Ninja Turtles was my first big major show. And we and worked on that for we like, on that six, for like months or so. six months or so. And it was awesome. It and was it was awesome. Thing. It was the greatest. Yeah, imagine <laughs> like uh, working on like a massive blockbuster like that, <laughs> like that early in your career too. Like having just like got off your first project with right. like, the, right. the Once Upon a Time, and then immediately going into like a massive blockbuster well, film. Well, like, well, between between and, 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 and the turtles. So it was like. So it was like. A good year a good or two, year or two transition. transition. Gotcha. And, gotcha. and, and, I, and I, I really wanted to do really a lot of personal work. work. Personal work. So I did a, so a, a Futurama series. A series. And, and, uh, and uh, that ended up going that viral. That ended up going viral. And it, it's and still it, the work that the gets me the most, most attention on my blog. Is all that old is all that old Um. Um. So you can let's see. Can, let's see. I still have it. I still have here. it around in here. If you Google it, yeah, you, can Google Google it you can still see. Like, you can still see my nipple. Still see my nipple that I did. And then uh, yeah, okay, I actually uh, really like that. And then like I saw the. Uh, I, I used to watch the Real Monsters when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. That you did. yeah. <laughs> I love that one. So, so that became so, a test. So that became a test from like, from like, my process, my process and, and uh, uh, just how I like to how visualize I like things. to visualize things. And so, uh, so uh, it, it kind of became a part of what I like to what do. I like to do just taking characters, taking and characters, and like full realism. Full realism. So it was really so nice to really grow nice experience. experience. But when I did, but when I did get to work on Turtles, work on it, turtles was, it was amazing it was because amazing I grew up as such a hard fan, fan of, the of the series. And, uh, series. and uh, so, uh, so getting to kind of live that childhood dream, dream was amazing. Yeah, I imagine like that must have been just like a, like a, just a full circle experience to actually you know go from just being like a fan of that as a child and then now you're actually in there working on it and building these things yeah it was it yeah, was, uh, it was so uh, cool. uh, uh, and i still get that kind of feeling when we get shows like that so uh, when you, when you get, oh, sorry, sorry, uh you don't stop you don't stop being a fan <laughs> oh yeah definitely not uh so like uh with what you're doing now like is there anything uh like upcoming you'd want to tease or tell us about that you're working on uh, not not to pry too much because obviously i'm sure you you can't talk too much about it but anything to kind of look out for oh sure well uh, oh, sure. uh, well, uh, uh, uh work on uh work on, did some work on that uh uh, uh, uh some stuff. Some stuff. Some stuff. Um, um, uh, let's see. Uh, Pete's let's Dragon see. is coming, Dragon out, on is coming out on Netflix uh, this March. Uh, this so March. That's really exciting, uh, that's to, really see. exciting to see. Um, um, Pete's Dragon was a really Pete's great Dragon experience. Pete's Dragon was a really great experience. So, so it, was, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Getting... That was something I actually, that was something wanted, to I actually wanted to ask you about. Um, 
Um, and I saw the pictures. I saw the pictures where the designs were on the designs shelf, were like on the shelf, figurine yeah, format. Figurine format. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, "What kind of experience? Like, what kind of experience? Like, where you like, work on something and go out and like go out? I did that. I did that. It's uh, it, it reaches uh, a point where it's really surreal. It reaches a point where it's really surreal. Uh, where uh, where it leaves you and it's not yours anymore. And it's not yours anymore. It becomes a, a it huge becomes a, a, a collaborative huge process. process. But uh, the but, fact that uh, I fact that feel like I had a part in it, had a part in it is, is an honor. Is an honor. Um, you know, whatever you feel about the movies, I love that experience. I love that experience. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 it's so, a it's point form or whatever. Whatever. Or whatever. Uh, I saved all of it. Saved all of it because it's it's just it's just it was a really really hard life. life. And the and the so I I print out the designs. I post them on the wall. You know, you know. I collected all the posters. Because you got to do that. Because you got to do that. You know, that's it's a a part of the experience. A part of the experience. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I imagine definitely. it like, yeah, kind of takes on a life of its own. It does. Uh, yeah, I, what I learned to do was not to do was not criticism, on, criticism the internet. on the internet. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> I know when the uh, content was revealed awesome. for the turtle movie, the like, turtle movie there, like, was so much there was flack. so much flack. And, and <laughs> don't get me wrong, I was, get me wrong, I was there with them. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I totally get it. You know, um, you know, um it was it was a it shock. Was, it was a shock to see it. Uh, when when uh, Mikey when, takes when off his mask, it was a shock to fans, and I think they weren't ready for it. I think they weren't ready for it. Also, like there are things that happen in production, you know, that they pick on a life of their own. Yeah, there's only so much. There's only so much you can control. Yeah, and 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 like I I don't write the script. I don't write the script. <laughs> you know, you know, definitely. Uh, uh, but still, but still, still, just awesome still just awesome awesome awesome. do you ever struggle? Do with you that? ever you struggle with like, that? Where it's like, like uh, uh, you don't necessarily, you don't like, necessarily like the film, the itself, film itself, itself, but you didn't work but you didn't for it. You're like, oh, you're like, oh. Um, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, I mean, that becomes uh, uh, that experience. That experience. Like for example, like I worked on Gods of Egypt. Egypt. <laughs> and, and oh no! Oh, no. They, they, <laughs> they used my they used uh, my, uh, my uh, posters, uh, uh, not my art, but my designs of the posters. And, um, and uh, so, it really, so it was really, really cool. Really cool, 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 cool and then you go and see the movie. You go see the movie, and you're like, "What the hell is going on?" Uh, so, but, so but, in but, end, but in the end, we still love it. Like, there's still something like, there's amazing still about seeing your work up there. Work up there. Uh, even if uh, uh, whatever surrounds it is just terrible. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, and, uh, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about like your about like your. You said you worked as a freelancer versus, versus working versus in a studio working as well. Studio like, as well, like. You have any like comparative yeah, any, like, notes comparative for that? Notes or the benefits of being in a studio versus, studio versus being, being by yourself, being by yourself, freelancing. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I for, think for uh, me personally, for me personally uh, freelance, uh, is freelance is really anxiety really ridden. Anxiety ridden. Uh, every day uh, is every like, day is like, like when I'm going to come in. I don't know when my next job is coming in, uh, and somehow you you manage to fill that, uh, and and those jobs do find you, but it's really anxious uh, up until then. Am I, am I lost? Did I get? Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Freelance was freelance not my jam. Freelance was not my jam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I found the anxiety was much, was much to deal with. To deal with. Uh, so, uh, so, you so, more of like, like a structured regiment then? I do need that structure. I do need that structure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, without, yeah, it, without I, it, I, I, I fall I, apart. I fall apart. Yeah, yeah. I see that a lot. Of, like some people just prefer having like a pipeline mentality, where like it, they're, they're kind of forced into like an iterative thing. Whereas like if they're left to their own devices, like 
finding that focus and self structure is kind of challenging. Absolutely, and, and there are guys that and there are guys that love it, and, and, and they're really really they're good really, at really good at managing that, and it works well for what they well need. What they need. So it's it's uh, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Uh, just for me personally, uh, for I, me it personally was I it was not a good not a good uh, workflow uh, for me. Workflow for me. Because then you yeah, end up working late into the night. Gotcha. Yeah. I was also curious because, like, you're you're in like a higher position now. What what was it like? Like, could you could you talk a little bit about like what it was like, kind of uh, like where you started, like when you first, kind of how like working your way up was like. Like, uh, did do you, do you like the position you're in now more? Or did you enjoy it more when you were sort of at like uh, having to work under someone, or well, what's that like? It, it's, it's definitely, definitely rewarding. rewarding to like when you see your team come up and they just rock an awesome design, you you feel a real sense of pride of that. Um, but now my my life is more meetings and taking notes and uh, scheduling artist time and things like that. So it's kind of true what they say is like as you go up, it's less art and more management. Um, but that has its own rewards and and learning about leadership is actually incredibly rewarding. Um, I still get to make art, and and that's you know the best part of my day. But uh, you know, I said the challenges are different. And when you're, I, th I think when you're a young artist and you're hungry, you just want to absorb as much as possible. So you don't want to, you know, why why try to be a manager when you just want to make art? Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Like it, it must be kind of like uh, rewarding too, though. Like where you've got artists under you now, and like. I imagine like where you've got a lot of more experience probably than some of the like newer people coming in that you can kind of give back to them and then also just seeing them improve and produce work like that. Like it must be yeah. sort of gratifying, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, it's super rewarding. And, and uh, I'm, I'm very lucky that I have a really awesome dedicated team. We have a lot of fun. Uh, most of our day is just like making sound effects and, you know, being goofballs and making art. And, uh, it's, it's, you know, that's what why I look forward to going into work in the morning is I'm surrounded by a really talented group of artists and that nourishes the artist in me. And so hopefully I can give back to them and, and you know, we all grow together because um, we'll pick up tricks from each other. We'll learn, you know, different things. So it's, it's collaborative. It's, uh, you know, dynamic. It's, uh, you know, always changing. Uh, and, and sometimes like, a client will throw a spit, uh, you know, a curveball at you, and we all have to pivot on a dime and change, you know, for what they need. <laughs> Would you say it's like a pretty relaxing environment then, or does it get like high stress sometimes, especially like with you having to manage so many different pieces as well as like continuing to produce art as well? You know, like, there's an ebb and flow. You know, there's an ebb and flow to it. Uh, some uh, days it is it's low key, and we're just watching movies at work and just making art. Other days it's high stress. We're we're problem solving, uh, you know, because we're doing, you know, full character assets and, and and as well as design. And so it's it's a lot of work when you're doing all that stuff all at once. And uh, so so some days you know it's hectic and and we're all stressed out and we're all, you know, feeling the heat. Uh, and then other times it's just low key kind of, uh, we're just surfing to the finish and. Um, so, so you never know what what kind of day it's it's going to turn into, and then sometimes it turns on a dime, and a day you thought you were going to get to relax is you're like, nope, crushing deadline, go. <laughs> so it's it's a, uh, but but it, it, it's amazing and it just it's nourishing and you know it keeps you going and excited and uh, every day is different. Uh, every day is different. Kind of comes in waves, I guess. Then, like <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And you never know what you never know what the client. Uh, they all have uh, every show has its own kind of quirks about it. You know, people think that these things are are well well oiled machines. They're not. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you're just surrounded by a bunch of you know, basically, I guess geeks pretty much that just eat this stuff up all day. So. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we, we do. do. Yeah, we, we do. Toys we everywhere. Toys everywhere. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, we're always watching movies, and uh, we we love talking about this stuff. And and uh, you know, every, every so often we'll eke a story out of Aaron, and uh, it's just the coolest thing. 
uh, when when we get to kind of hear about you know the the old day you know like the Stan Winston days or the Rick Baker days and uh, he'll kind of share his stories with us stories really with fun. us it's really fun get some good war stories yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it's, really yeah it's really funny do you have any like do you personal, have any, like, projects, personal projects, projects for you that you want to do like down the road yeah absolutely um, you, you know I'm working on stuff right now uh, I've produced um, two web series with my wife uh, called Hers in History in 25-ish. And, uh, you know, those will be coming out very soon. And a little, a little bit of a different departure than, uh, than, what I, uh, than what I do at work. But, uh, you know, my wife was kind of the spearhead of, of those. And um, so watching those projects come to fruition under her direction has been really rewarding to watch as well. Um, so, so yeah, we, we have lots of stuff that we want to do and make and 3d print and, you know, there, when you have so much that you want to make every day, there's just never enough time to do it all. Yeah, I know that feeling, <laughs> you know, like there, there's always some new mountain to climb, some new challenge. And, and so we're, we're working on a, on a horror film right now. Uh, that we think is really going to be fun. I'm not going to talk about it yet, but you know, one day I'll, I'll, we'll blast that out there. But it's a, it's a really exciting, fun project that we're all excited about. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we, we're just trying to make you know cool stuff. You know, movies and 3D prints and sculptures and art and uh, there's so much to do in a day. Yeah, definitely. Like this, it always seems like. <laughs> it always seems like there's always like a shortage of time when you're trying to work on all these different projects and get things done. It, that's kind of the beauty about it is like, you know, accountants and, and this is no offense to accountants, but accountants don't go home and think about accounting. You exactly. know, they're not thinking about spreadsheets. They're not thinking about number crunching. You know, they're doing their hobby. When your, when your hobby is your life is your, your whole being, um, that is the purpose-driven life. You know, you are, you have a purpose, you have a fire, you know, that ignites inside of you every day to go do what you love. And that's the best part. You know, e even the days that, that are long or really highly stressed or exhausting, you know, you, you wake up to do it all over again because it's the best feeling ever. Oh yeah, I agree. Like there's no, I mean, th there's no real end to, uh, like the, the amount of things that you can do with like a creative field like art either between like making comics and working yeah. on concept design and games and movies and you know all this just everything and each project is kind of is different you know so yeah. you're always exploring these new venues whereas like I mean of course this isn't like dogging anyone else's profession but like I talk to my parents pretty often about like they ask what are you gonna do for re retirement and I'm like well I don't really plan to retire. Yeah, it's not gonna you happen. <laughs> yeah, and they don't understand that concept, you know. Yeah. And so uh, I think a, a lot of other artists probably relate to that. Absolutely, because it's it's like uh, it's why you know I, I don't know I I just hope that everybody in the world can find what they love to do and do that thing you know all day because um, that it. it it makes you a better person, mm -hmm. I think, uh, to, to have a passion. You know, if, if you're, I don't know, if you're just wondering what it, where to go or what to do, just start making things and, and you know, yeah. people will find it. And, you know, that's, uh, like, yeah, I definitely think you raise a really good point because, like, in the, in the end, we're all going to be in the dirt eventually anyway. Yeah. So, you know, you might as well just go all out and really try to do something that you enjoy and love and, you know, try to, uh, expand your experiences with that and, and and this you also brought up another point is like you know when it comes to just doing things i posted something about this earlier is like there's never going to be a perfect moment to do stuff yeah you know so just go do it with what you have um absolutely like there was i, I was watching this thing where like you know you, you're you hear a lot of people say oh well, i need to wait till i get the materials to do this or i need to wait until i do this in order to do this but then i watched a video today and it was it was just studying and i was looking at some tips on figure drawing and this guy was like oh well you know i don't have any materials and so but i'm on you know vacation on a beach so i went out and i found a fire pit and there was a bunch of charcoal around it so i picked pieces of that up and then i found a scrap of cardboard and, <laughs> and he made this like really really awesome figure drawing and i was like well see that's what you need to do is just take what you can, you know, do what you can with what you have. Absolutely. 
when when you can draw, there's you should never be bored. Yeah, you know, 100%. you should always be drawing, sculpting. Uh, and, and if you're not doing any of the, the creative stuff, you should be learning, mm -hmm. you know, learning how the world works and, and learning how light and physics and, and anatomy, uh, all those things work, you know, from, from the inside out, you know, cause that all makes, that all feeds the same beast, right? It feeds the, the artist, you know, all is one. Yeah, definitely. I have a really interesting question in the chat from, uh, Jonathan Hernandez. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I bring this one up because it's actually pretty. Uh, he he works as a concept artist, uh, illustrator in video games, and uh, yeah, as you see, in a video game outsourcing company. And he's still waiting to work in. He wants to work in cinema, and he said, "Any tips to like focus his portfolio or like, which that that's kind of an interesting thing because like like the difference between doing like concept art for either like a game yeah. or a film." What would you tell them in that? Yeah, I well, I mean, they're they're definitely uh, those two kind of genres are starting to to you know well together, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of design, especially as uh, as games get really cinematic um, and really you know kind of epic feeling. Um, I would you know as uh, as most artists will probably tell you, you know, uh, uh, dedicate your portfolio to the studio you want to work for. Um, so so look at the the work that they're producing and try to match that. And then that way, when you send it something, you know, when you send them something there, it's in their wheelhouse. They're already looking for it. Mm -hmm. um, so film definitely has a, a high focus on um, subtlety and realism. So you can't get away with like big hands or, you know, big feet, like, you know, good anatomy, good proportions. And then like, uh, you know, a, a strong sense of design as well. So interesting shapes and character on top of all that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I hope that that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I think that as long as you have the fundamentals down, I mean, yeah. you know, do, doing like, you know, either video game or film, like it's it's either or. Uh, yeah. I mean, of course, the more like, I guess the more realistic you push, um, like the more towards realism you push with your stuff, then, you know, the closer you get to uh, doing things in film. Right. And, and then also knowing what you want uh, as yeah. well is really important, uh, you know, and, and uh, I would also, you know, urge, you know, artists to, to do things that maybe you don't want to do in the beginning. Um, so you can do the things that you want to later on. Mm. Um, so, so, you know, learn how every part of the pipeline works um, and, and contribute wherever you can. And then while you're in, you know, when, you know, get your, get your foot in the door, um, and get FaceTime with people and, and let them get to know you so they can learn what you want to do, you know? Yeah, um, definitely. Like that was one reason we started this group up to begin with was just like saying, okay, social media is like a huge advantage for everybody. So, you know, it's, uh, we wanted to like, you know, said, okay, well we could talk to people that are like, you know, either working professionals or whatever in the industry and try to really figure smart. out and just other artists in general, just to figure out the ropes more or less, yeah. you know? So, don't Absolutely. ever be afraid to put yourself out there for sure. Yeah, and, and um, you know, I and I've I've seen a lot of bad behavior as well. It, it's yeah. it's um, one thing you never want to do is like harass artists or harangue them over Facebook. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people don't realize that social media, it, you know, it's a two way street. Uh, that yes, you can connect to these people, but you know, people are only so nice and so tolerant of bad behavior. You know, so so I've seen artists, you know, like message people, you know, incessantly, um, and that's not acceptable. Like, you know, be a person, you know, be a, be a good person online uh, as well, because your your reputation will precede you, yeah. and um, it can do a lot of damage if you're not um, careful. Um, you know, what you say online is a representation of you at all times. And you should always conduct yourself professionally and, you know, try to be, you know, a decent human being. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, I think that last part is like the really, the focal bit, just as long yeah. as you're a decent human being. Yeah. Like, and and I, don't, don't harass people. I, I <laughs> you know, I, I get a lot of messages, you know, sometimes at like two, three in the morning and it's like, what are you doing? Who's going to respond to this? <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and that said, like, I try to talk to everybody. 
you know, everybody that I can at least. And, you know, but, but if you're obnoxious, I'm, you know, who wants to talk to you? Like if you're constantly messaging someone, you're not going to, you're not going to do yourself any favors, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I've watched, I've watched some people kind of crash and burn on that, you know, by, by having bad online behavior, you know, uh, it doesn't matter how good of an artist you are. If you're a jerk, you know, no, no one wants to work with you. Work. Yeah. No one wants to work with you. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, you know, that's, that's like, I mean, I, I completely agree. I mean, and that's the thing is you don't necessarily have to sit back and like watch your behavior. You just have yeah. to not be, don't, don't be an asshole, you know? Yeah. So just as long as you, conduct yourself and just you know be like okay we're all trying to be like an artist or whatever and trying to work in that field or, or in general just yeah you're connecting with people and it, this industry is all people and yeah. and you have to know how to talk to people definitely um, uh, uh, here's one one tip is a lot of artists think that talking to other artists is going to get them jobs uh, that's not how it's going to work. Like sometimes that works, you know, and having those connections is great, but the people who hire you are in HR, right? They're human resources people. They're looking to fill seats and they, uh, they look for a specific set of like people skills. Yeah. Uh, so you got to know how to talk to HR people and conduct yourself in a professional fashion. Well, that, like there's a huge combination like of things to be like really successful and there's no one way to do it either like yeah absolutely you see these people that do like their patreon and there's some people that make like an amazing living just off yeah. of that yeah yeah dude thing. and 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 those guys are are extraordinary like mm -hmm. no doubt um you know uh i often look at uh you know those you know they're pillars of the kind of art community and, and they really um they lift everybody up with their knowledge it's really awesome yeah, you know, definitely. That's, that's one thing that 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 I think continues to, you know, give me hope is just how wonderful the the community is to each other. You know, they they really are giving with their knowledge and their time, so it's awesome. Yeah, hundred percent. And then that all that just ties back to like, as long as you you know you train yourself to have the skill in art that you want, and yeah. you are a effective business person mm -hmm. then you're going to be okay you know and you just yeah I think so. you know you just enjoy like and you know you'll make a lot of connections just in that way like um not to kind of like expand into a story of my own but like that that was kind of how like i i held back for a while like on posting to social media till like a couple of years ago and yeah then absolutely. when i did i immediately landed in an art group and then you know, I wound up doing interviews for people, making a ton of friends and then meeting people that were working in the industry. And all that was just from like, I didn't even think I was ready, but I was like, Oh, I'm just going to go ahead anyway, whatever. Yeah. And, and all that is, is, is awesome. You know, and, and people skills are so valuable. <laughs> it's so important to know how to talk to people and like, it be a good person. <laughs> Yeah, we, we spend so much time like just isolated like ourselves yeah. to, not like you know when you're drawing and painting you're not talking to people all the time so it's not a social activity yeah you know, so when you need to talk to people because like you don't want to you don't want to lose like being in touch with like you said just you know people skills yeah the human element <laughs> is, is is a really important part of it and uh yeah man the uh it's just so important like to know how to and and look like we're we're artists so we're all like a little awkward we're all a little weird you know so Everyone, I, everyone's weird though so yeah we're we all we're all weird like i can't tell you like how many <laughs> conversations i've had with other artists where we just don't end the conversation well we're just like okay bye yeah you know like it, it was just, there's just a little bit of that but that's like kind of what's introversion. Yeah. yeah. You know, where that, but that's also kind of endearing, you know, at the same time, you're just like, all right, bye. <laughs> just kind of embrace it. Like, you know, yeah, just embrace, it, just embrace okay. your weirdness. Like we're all weird. We get it. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just funny. Oh, definitely. Uh, Jared, we're sitting on about an hour, man. I mean, you know, uh, uh, I think, uh, is well, there's something that went that fast. We, that went really fast. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're sorry again for all like the the technical like. Uh, it happened. Stuff yeah, that that but, stuff happens. No worries. Um, we do one thing at the end of the interview where it's like one piece of advice, like that you say is probably the most significant you could lend to to like other artists that are either growing or trying to improve their art or yeah. you know just or maybe maybe not even improve but just you know 
working artist or whatever, what, what is the one piece of advice if you could tell somebody that would make a difference, what would it be? Uh, persistence. Don't give up. Uh, your art will hit peaks and valleys, and you'll also hit declines as well. Mm -hmm. So expect the declines, fight through them, and make another piece. Uh, sometimes it's letting go of a piece. Sometimes it's you know returning to a piece that you've abandoned. Um, but but either way, like just keep going. Just keep going. Don't stop. Um, even no matter how much like self doubt you have, because we all have self doubt, right? It's it's not going to go away. No matter how much self doubt you have, you have to persist. You have to do it every day, all day, and you gotta love it. You gotta absolutely obsess about it. And and on top of that, uh, so persist, and then on top of that, take care of your body for God's sakes. Yeah. Uh, uh, nourish your body. You know, hydrate. Uh, get exercise, stretch regularly while you're doing this because you're sitting down for long periods of time. So uh, take care of your health <laughs> on top of that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like I think those are two. Like it's two key points. Definitely persistence. Take care of yourself physically. Yeah. Uh, th yeah. There was something I was actually going to say uh, something about earlier when you were talking, but we were having those echo issues. Was uh, a yeah. um, actually yoga is something yes. that you know people that should like when you're sitting for so long it's probably one of the best things that for you if you know anybody that wants to get into physical stuff that maybe make them feel better uh that will definitely help significantly because yeah, you know, you're stretch yeah you're stretching your flexibility and everything then when you sit down you actually feel refreshed yeah you know so yeah. yoga running um running is really great for you so get out there and and you know, once you kind of get up and sweat for a little bit, when you come back to your artist, to, to your work, you'll be so much more focused because you're not like worried about your body. You've taken care of it, you know? So now you can just make art guilt free. You know what I mean? hundred mm -hmm. percent. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Jared, thanks so much, man, for coming on and taking time out awesome. just to, you know, hang out with us and you know, such. We both really appreciate it. Oh dude, this is awesome. Thanks so much for, for having me guys. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jared. Yeah, again, yeah, thank you. anybody who's listening, sorry about the technical issues. We'll try to make sure we have that resolved, Nick, for next time. And, uh, you know, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. And look out for the Pete's Dragon Blu-ray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Later, everyone.